All right, let's pick up where we left off. The previous time we reviewed extensive research about where the OECD research took us in terms of higher leverage in general and how credit worthy bonds are becoming slightly lower, how highly profitable companies are now far and few. If this is not you know, ringing familiar to you, I encourage you to go back and listen to the previous part. The question we want to start with here is if that is what the world is today and the United States is today, how did we get here? And one of the things that has happened, whether it is through debt financing or equity or anything else, is that in general, money supply has been higher. And there is a lot of optimism. So the CFOs of companies may say, well, you know, we believe that we can turn this around. We believe that we can restructure. So you go out and borrow, you sign these covenants, and then there is uncertainty. And when there is uncertainty that comes in the tail end, it creates problems where the profitability of the company doesn't rise as fast as it should. And those who saw the previous part would have noticed that the, the percentage of highly profitable companies and their return on equity and return on assets is dropping rather quickly. So here is a very simple conclusion. The time to go right now and buy a corporate bond has arrived. I would encourage you to go buy anything you see. Clearly this is a kangaroo and there is nothing to be worried about. Welcome to Yield Nerd, an educational show about how you can acquire and manage yield. Maybe not. Let's hold your horses. Here's what we're going to do in this part. We are going to spend time educating ourselves on how to analyze a corporate bond. And before we jump into that, I want to first tell you why we even are spending all this time before we jump into corporate bonds. We looked at U.S. Treasuries. America has not defaulted. The risk assessment would say it is AAA, very, very low risk. We then looked at agency bonds. Again, it is backed by the federal government in certain cases. You get preferential treatment and default risk is really not there. And so they are a very, very low risk as well. And then we looked at municipal bonds. It kind of sort of, yes, it's there. There is some risk. And sometimes you get bit by the tax thing. You thought there was no tax and then there is tax. And now we are looking at corporate bonds, investment grade bonds. And <clears throat> if you read the news on, you know, where bonds are headed or where they have headed already this year, you will know that there is a lot of uncertainty there. And so what that means is you need to know how to evaluate a bond before you actually go out and buy one. And that is what we're going to spend time. And there are really two things to look at when evaluating a bond. The first is the issuer. How much do you know the company that is issuing the bond and what kind of research can you do about the company? The second is the instrument. How much do you know the bond itself? So let's dive deeper into the issuer. How can you look at the company that is issuing the bond and say, do I like where this company is headed? The first thing you want to look at is the financial health. Two quick things to look at. How much liability does the company have as a percentage of owner's equity. This is called debt to equity ratio. And obviously if a company has very little debt and you are the first party with that debt and several other metrics also add up, I would say that sounds like, you know, to the, to the extent that few other things are true and you're gonna see what they are, you kind of wanna be one of the first creditors to a good company. That's what makes a good bond. The next is debt to EBITDA. We talked about this earlier. If the company is highly profitable, they can easily afford debt. Then you would ask the question, well, why does a highly profitable company even need debt? Well, there are tax reasons why they may do it and certain interest payments may be tax deductible and I don't wanna get into that business. But at the end of the day, if a company is highly profitable, they don't have a lot of debt on their books, specific to the financial health of the issuer, that's a pretty good bet. Let's go to the next part. You wanna look at their performance. 
Does the company's sales have a good track record? Do they have a hotcake they are selling? And how is their profit coming along? Here is what I would say. Some of us were around when Blackberry was the rage. Their sales was growing tremendously. Their earnings were growing tremendously. So clearly, if we only looked at EBITDA, if we only looked at the financial health and if we looked at performance, we would conclude <clears throat> that every BlackBerry bond was the best thing since sliced bread. So there obviously are a couple of other things we got to look at, and that would be the business environment. What is the competition for that particular company that you're looking at? And sometimes, and, and there are books written about it, Competition doesn't come from inside the industry. Those of us that we have seen music labels get appended by iTunes, competition may come from outside the industry. And this is the reason why I would encourage yield nerds to truly understand the company. You can't just go by the credit rating. You have to sit there and say, do I know this industry? Do I know how this company is positioned towards competition? Do I know what other industry forces there are? Aside from looking at the financial health and the business environment, it's very important that you truly understand what that company is about. And those are all under the classifications of understanding the issuer. Let's assume for a moment that you did all of that. You may want to talk to a couple of people. When I say talk to a couple of people, let's say that it's, you know, the company you're investing in makes a telephone. You could talk to people that own the telephone. Hey, how do you like that? You know, has, has that worked for you lately? What do you plan to buy? And I'm not suggesting go call some officer of the company, and that obviously is not legal. But you can ask your comrades, your fellow uh, citizens, and try to get an idea of, is there anything about the company I've missed in all my research? Look for industry reports, credit history. What else can you learn? And you would put all of that together to form your opinion about the issuer. And then... We're going to go back to the second half. We know about the issuer. Let's educate ourselves about the instrument. So what you're going to do, and I'm showing Schwab and my usual disclaimers apply. I'm not endorsing Schwab. But when you go to bonds and fixed income at the bottom, you will see an area that says enter the QCIP. And the QCIP we are going to enter, and we're going to do a municipal bond, and then we're going to do a corporate bond just so you understand how this works. You're going to enter 452152JS1. Go ahead and pull up a browser. Type that into the QCIP field of whichever brokerage account you use. <clears throat> and something like this is going to show up. It gives a bond summary. It says it's a AA rated bond. This other rating company, it says it's A1. And all of this is great. But this is not enough information for you to say, yep, that sounds good to me. And, and that would not be an yield nerd. That would be a very impulsive nerd. So we are going to dive deeper. We're going to click on that Illinois state and out comes this screen. This screen, you know, in face value says, well, here is the bond. It's a municipal bond. It kind of says what was there already. It says it pays 4%. It says it's a general obligation bond. That is not enough for you to make a decision because you don't even know if it is state taxable or not. As a matter of fact, the state taxable field is a blank. That's not good enough. So you're going to be an eel nerd and you're going to click summary information because you're going to dive deeper. And when you click summary information, you're going to get this beautiful screen. It shows all kinds of stuff. It says, who is the issuer? Here are facts, Illinois is gonna use the proceeds to do the state's transportation, it's gonna do school construction. And you say, that's all well and good. Uh, I, I don't know whether it's taxable. And it doesn't jump out at you. So you're gonna click this little area that says supplemental data. And when you click that, aha, this is state taxable, whether or not you live in Illinois. And that is how you know this is in state taxable. And the reason I take you through all of these steps is to show you that it takes several steps to get to the answer. And even that was not the prospectus. So if you opened a Google browser and you typed QCIP da 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 prospectus, you would actually be able to see the actual 
100 plus page prospectus and somewhere deep in the bowels you can see that series a bonds are excluded from federal income tax purposes and not exempt from state of illinois income taxes and the reason i'm walking you through all of these steps is so you understand how to get the answer not just believe that is the answer so now that you became an expert in understanding the issuer and understanding the instrument let's see if you can understand a corporate bond and you would think the process would be identical but it is not so let's get into a corporate bond i randomly picked a bond i have no allegiance to this i'm not suggesting you buy it i'm just showing you how to research it here is a bond credit suisse 7.125 percent you are going to click on the blue text and once you click the blue text if you want to get here you could also have searched by qsip 22541 l as in larry a as in alpha e as in edward three so once you click that it pulls up this screen and you're going to click the little disclosure and it says the notes are unsecured and you know you know maybe it will default if we cannot pay the principal or we cannot pay the interest and you say okay well uh, that's well and good what, what am i really investing in and the answer is not there so you're going to google 22541 lae3 prospectus and you get this lovely unformatted hard to read document you can read that or you could go and and within that document somewhere in here it actually says you know what we are going to do with your money we're going to go buy fannie mae securities so it's really a mortgage-backed security you buy the bond the bond buys mortgage-backed securities that pay a higher interest rate and they pay your coupon from that that is essentially what it is saying um <clears throat> here is another municipal bond and in this scenario i'm sorry this is another corporate bond in this scenario, it's an electrical company. It's Entergy, Louisiana. Again, no relation to them. You can buy them, not buy them. I don't care. And this says that there is a 3.12% coupon, and you're going to click on that. Once again, when you click on that, you see this summary screen, a whole bunch of dashes, and you can't tell, is it secured? Is it not secured? You click on the disclosure, and you get this big blob of text. Once again, it doesn't tell you what is the security behind this bond? If Entergy Louisiana does not pay, what is the recourse of the bondholders? And know that most of the bonds are held by large institutions. You are an individual. And so when you are holding that bond, you kind of get to ride along with the large institutions in many cases. That's the truth of the matter. Um, but what you are able to then say is, you know what, I'm going to find out more about this bond. So you would go to scc.gov slash Edgar, and Edgar is the tool that you would use to look at bond offerings, prospectus, anything that is filed with the SEC. Once you're there, you're gonna click full text search, and you would see a screen that looks like this. Go ahead and type enter GL, and you can see enter G Louisiana. So you're gonna pick enter G Louisiana, as you can see, this is not a one-step process. There are a couple of more steps. And within Entergy Louisiana, you're going to type prospectus. And once you type prospectus, you know the bond was issued in 2017. Out comes the prospectus right there. So you're going to click on the prospectus. And the actual prospectus opens up. A very easy, searchable prospectus. Thank you for showing the prospectus, but why did we come here? We want to know whether this is secured or not and what the security is. So we're going to click on open document. And once you open the document, we're going to search mortgaged property. And here is what it shows. It shows that these bonds are the first lien on mortgaged property. And you go, what's the mortgaged property? And what that is telling you is literally, pardon me, literally these bonds put the mortgage on any of the assets owned by the utility company in Louisiana, whether it is real property, personal property, franchises, permits, license, 
So this is a fairly secure bond. What it says is if they screw up, you get to literally go tell Union County, Arkansas and say, well, I want my money or I own your assets. And that doesn't mean you get to go turn off the power for the good people of Arkansas. It just means that you have a lot of leverage. A word of recognition. If you are breathing heavy saying, oh my God, this is a lot of work. I'm gonna tell you one quick thing. This is how much work you should be doing before you put your money to work for you. If you're buying stock today thinking, oh yeah, I know enough about the stock. I watch it on TV. You are doing yourself a disservice. So my humble request of you is you need to be doing research. You need to be an educated investor. You need to be a nerd. And since you invest in yield, you need to be a yield nerd. We're going to leave that right here and pick it up in the next part. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to Yield Nerd, a do-it-yourself show for yield accumulation and management. 